Uh, hi, I'm Angela Knuth, and we're in Mead, Nebraska. I farm with my husband and two sons, and uh, we're uh, pretty much corn, soybeans, wheat, and uh, a little bit of alfalfa uh, as we move some acres into organics. You know, we, we produce a crop from mid-April to around mid-October. The rest of that time, that, that field is just sitting there doing nothing for us. So it made sense with all the talk of cover crops and uh, the benefit of, of them to the soil to get those on our soil uh, in, our, in our field so that um, hopefully down the road um, we'll be reducing our input costs. And then, uh, and then to pay for that seed um, in, in the year that we're planting those cover crops, we thought, well, cattle would be uh, you know, the perfect solution for that. My name is Ashley Conway. I'm um, a new faculty member at the Center for Agroforestry, University of Missouri. Um, prior to coming here, I was working on my PhD with Mary Janowski at University of Nebraska-Lincoln. We were approached by a local producer in Mead, Nebraska, looking for ways to diversify their large operation and incorporate livestock. They are not livestock producers. They didn't want to learn how to raise cattle. They didn't want to buy cattle. They didn't want to be really, um, they didn't want to become beef producers, but they wanted to um, diversify their income streams and capture some of the benefits of rye and maybe um, look at some benefits of grazing as well. We didn't want to raise any ourselves, but we thought we could get uh, some neighbors or just uh, cattle producers that are looking for grazing to extend their grazing to come on our land. And then so those months that that we weren't, you know, in conventional row crop using that land, now we're putting cover in it and hopefully, you know, getting paid for grazing. It just, you know, that's the whole mindset of it, it was just trying to, uh, you know, use a resource that we had that was un underutilized and in, in making it um, a little more profitable. We designed this two-year study that got us their graduate student research grant um, around looking at ways to, um, to, to study a system where the, our on-farm producer, our cooperators, our producer cooperators could continue doing their traditional corn and soybean rotation. And then at the end of the fall harvest, whether they were planting or whether they had just finished harvesting beans or corn, we would plant a cereal rye and let it either germinate in the fall or just lay dormant, depending on what the weather was going to do. And it would vernalize over the winter, it would basically go to sleep. But then when spring started coming, that wheat would then sprout up and we'd have really lush green growth in those early spring days of March, April, May, before we would, um, after we would graze that, that rye cover crop um, and then kill it immediately before planting. So we wanted to know how much growth could we gain? How many grazing days could we do? Would the costs of implementing a rye cover crop and then grazing it uh, would that would those benefits come out as increased gain and would it uh, measure out in the sense that could we gain more income by doing the extra work of planting the cover crop grazing it would that pay off in pounds of beef basically you know everybody's always worried about compaction with cattle and we were planting corn that spring so we were a little nervous about compaction and and how our um our corn seeding would go and we actually um, didn't have a single problem. It was more just weather delays than, than anything uh, else. But uh, it turned out that that crop year that uh, those two fields, um, the corn harvest, the yield was as good or better than um, years we've had in the past. I farm with my husband and Actually, he, he's the one that makes the final decision, and he doesn't have exactly the same mindset I, I have. So it's been kind of a struggle to get him to get cattle, want to put cattle back on, and also just the money spent up front for the seat on covers. He's not fond of that because, you know, there's not a return in 12 months. 
with uh, conventional. So it's been a struggle, but we've got some neighbors that are doing uh, organics and, and covers and grazing that. So now he's seeing that. So he's not the odd man out. So he's starting to warm up to it. Uh, this fall, we're going to put some probably some rye in and uh, see if we can find some some neighbors that have cattle that want to graze. What I love about this project was that it really was organically produced in the sense that we were approached by the Knuths and they wanted to to figure out how best to diversify their operation. And so it was really a cooperative kind of project. Um, it was really designed around actual producer needs. And we think that the information that we got from it is extremely practical for producers in the region who are also interested in looking at ways to diversify their cropping system productions.